Now let's talk about our new formulation, which is the matrix formulation. Essentially, the matrix formulation tries to take a graph and represent it using a stochastic adjacency matrix M. Let's say that the page I has B I outlinked. And if I links to J, then M J I is actually equal to one over B I. And you can see that this is actually equivalent to our flow formulation previously, where we split the votes from node I evenly to each outlink. And if I does not link to J, then corresponding MJI will be zero. And here M is called a column stochastic matrix because each column uh, sums to one. For example, here, is a um, example stochastic adjacency matrix. And if no, let's say that no actually links, no y actually links to y and a, then these two entries would both be one over two, and this one would be zero. We can see that here each column in this matrix adds up to one. And then we have this rank factor R which has one entry per page, per page. And, and RI is actually the important score of page I. And remember in the flow formulation, we have an additional constraint, right? And therefore correspondingly here, we have that uh, the sum of all the entries of R is equal to one. And finally, we can then write down um, the flow equations using um, the matrix formulation here. We can see that, that these two are actually equivalent given how we construct this M here. And to convince you that the matrix formulation is actually correct, let's take a look at this example. Let's, just, let's suppose that um, we already transformed the graph and the flow equations into the adjacency, stochastic adjacency matrix M here. And let's suppose that we have three pages linked to J, one, two, three here, including page I. And now in order to compute the important score of page J, which is the RJ here, we need to compute the inner product between the row J of M here and and R here. And we can see that the inner product of these of this two vectors actually has three terms. And one of the terms is exactly the product of one over di and ri. So we can see that it's, it, it's actually adding up the votes coming from the, coming from the incoming links in order to calculate the final important score for page j. And until now, we already know that the flow equations can be written as R, R equals to M times R or, or M times or M times R equals to R. So basically this, this ring vector R here is, is actually an eigenvector of the stochastic web matrix M. Why? Remember that if a matrix A times a vector x is equal to lambda x, where lambda is actually a scalar. And we can say that this vector x is actually a eigenvector of the matrix A corresponding to the eigen, eigenvalue lambda. So here we can see that A is actually the M here, x is, is actually the R here, and, and lambda equals to one. So, if, so in fact, we can already see that R is the eigenvector for, for the matrix M, and it's first of principal eigenvector with the corresponding, um, corresponding eigenvalue one. And you can actually prove that the largest eigenvalue of M is actually one, since the M is column stochastic with non-negative entries. Now with this, eigenvector formulation, we can now efficiently solve for R. And the method we are gonna use is called power iteration. 
And for example, let's say that we have this small small graph here, and these are the uh, the full equations. And let's say they were already write down the corresponding uh, column stochastic adjacency matrix M here. So basically, we already have this equation, and we want to solve for R. And in the next part, we will talk about how to solve for R here using the power iteration method.